Welcome to the Charlie Hurley Park here in Bandon, to the sun-splashed Charlie Hurley Park as the throng of people descend on this on this Sunday, the 13th of November, the last Sunday for Championship Hurling in Cork, in fact, this year. All the remaining finals are on today, but the one that we have a look at and the one that attracts most attention in the county this afternoon of course is the junior county hurling final and the finalists of course as everybody knows come to this place today from the champions of Carberry they are of course Newcestown double champions in Carberry actually this year because they also won the football championship there but that's another story and they meet the men from Inishannon the champions of Carrick Down much has been spoken and written of this match in the last 10 days particularly, but ever since it became obvious that Newcestown were coming from West Cork and in Shannon or Valley Rovers from the southeast, this was the one that everybody talked about and this is the way that it has panned out to be. So everything's set, the day is absolutely perfectly still, there's not a puff of breeze, the pitch is in excellent condition, the crowd will be gigantic I think, the scene just about set for one of the most enthralling, we expect, junior county hurling finals. Well, with me now, I have the chairman of the New Sistown Club this afternoon, Paddy O'Halloran. Paddy, your thoughts on today's game? Well, my thoughts on every game are, four games, I think it's going to be very close. Um, I think ourselves played very well against Killa. Uh, I was impressed with ourselves against Killa. I said, the first time this year, I've been impressed. But having seen Valley Rovers over New Sistown against Abel over the second half, I think we're in for one hell of a game. They're overseeing to have more scoring power than us. I think we'll just have to contain them. If we don't, I think we're in real trouble. And the afternoon that you won the Southwest Championship, and of course the day that you played Killer, those were really wet days when the ground conditions were very heavy. Today is a bit different to that. It'll be a little faster, or at least we hope it will anyway. Will that affect you, do you think? I'd say no. I'd say today is ideal for a real good hurling game because do you know hurlers there's been so much of the year training they have a sheer amount of skill uh, today's condition will certainly let both teams be able to play it very freely and open to suit Newston as much as Valley Rose I think well the local derby of course has everybody talking or the lo it's as local a derby as you're likely to get in a county final do, do, does that have a, a role to play do you think in it or does it bother you that you're playing a club next door to you as it were I, I'd say that means more for the, for the supporters I think the players now inside in the dressing rooms I think it doesn't matter really if Valley Rovers are playing killer, if we had been playing, say, somebody like Newton Shandam or any other team, I'd say, and for the players themselves, the actual game itself, wouldn't, it doesn't make much difference who they're playing against. If there's a county final to be won, and, and both teams just go out and set about winning it, it probably doesn't mean a lot for support and the build-up of the game. Certainly would add to the tendency to the fact it is a local derby. Now, I know that a lot of people were of the opinion that Newcestown were too good an intermediate team to come down junior. Do you feel that you've been vindicated by getting to this county final? Well, it has, it has certainly taught us a lot playing junior hurling this year, that unless you put in preparation, no matter what grade you're in, you, you just win nothing. Newstone hadn't a lot done for the first game against Castletown, and we were just put to the pin of our collar. The same happened against uh, Timmy League the first day. Since then, I think the work has shown, for instance, it has shown that we have improved all right, we have improved, and I think whichever team wins today, be it Valley Rovers and Newstone, they're certainly capable now for a higher grade. Okay. Mm. Well, Paddy, can I wish you every good luck with it one way or another, and we'll talk again when the game is over. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. With me now, I have Leo Lynch, who is, of course, the chairman of the Valley Rovers Club, and John Newman, who, of course, is very involved with uh, the Valley Rovers, particularly at underage. He also writes a bit for the Southern Star, and he's famous in his own right. For the... Can I come to you first, Leo, and ask you about your thoughts for the, of today's game? Oh, well, Beth, uh, looking forward to a, a good horse holding, and uh, as far as we're concerned, there's only one result that will please us. Um, at this stage, we're ready, very much so, and um, I think that uh, the credentials the team have, like, are substantial at this stage. They've had fairly emphatic wins in all their games, and the, um, the quality of the, uh, of, of the team is probably about, uh, it's above question, because more so the strength of the panel rather than any individual contribution the members can make. John, can I come to you and ask you about your thoughts today? You obviously expect to win. Yes, uh, my thoughts today are, the word, as the word says, we are out for a win. Uh, we need it badly. I think the players, not that they'll get any sympathy from Newstone, but I think they will have the majority of sympathy to the crowd. They deserve it. They've put in some great years from uh, oh, way underage up to junior, and they had the hard look of under-21 hurling and junior football. So today, I think, is their day. Is, is that a problem coming here, the fact that you've had such hard luck in finals in the past? I don't think so. I think it will stand for the lads. I, I think the experience of county final day 
should uh, should be in Norway un unnerving for them. And uh, I think they have the hauling skill. Uh, we have the day which we wanted, the sun in their, at their backs, as they say. And uh, I think they, sh they will go from the world go, and uh, I think they have the potential to win it. Leo, good luck with the game. We will talk at half time. Okay. Well, the New Sistown players are already on the pitch, and as the Valley Rovers players make their way onto the field, I have beside me Aidan O'Rourke and Sean Crowley, both committee members at New Sistown. What do you think the condition of the pitch is today, Sean? Well, uh, I'm just after coming to it now, like, uh, but I think it's uh, uh, looking very good anyway. Like, you know, it has been rested with a while, like, uh, and uh, uh, I don't think we can ask for it anymore, like, uh, like a smashing fine day. Like, uh. I've said it already to Paddy Crowley when I was talking to him earlier, Aidan. Of course, you fellas are sort of used to playing in poorer conditions. Are you happy with the conditions here? Oh, well, of course, yes. I mean, hurling, you, you'd like to have good conditions for hurling, really. Like, you, you can't play hurling in, in muck and gutter, like, I mean. You know, the uh, they adapt themselves very well, really, to, to the conditions they met earlier in the year. Like, but we are very happy that the pitch is in this condition. Like, you know, I think we, we should have a splendid game of hurling. So you didn't really mind where the game was going to be played from the world? Not at all, no. It made no difference to news as to where the game would be played. Like, uh, the county board fixed the game and we are quite happy no matter where. You know? that's, that's all. Sean, of course, you've come today to ex expecting to win, but nevertheless on your passage through the uh, South West Championship, at times you weren't so convincing. Does that bother you about today's final? Uh, no, I don't bother me uh, about today's final, but for the simple reason that there's always, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, when a team drops down a grade, like, uh, there's always kind of uh, some players that feel that it's a an easy thing to win in the lower grade like that and uh, you know uh, that's the uh, other teams can kind of rise to the occasion and you know that, that's the way it is every game is a game and it's like Tim Lee had that chance but the Mahonas had that chance but once we survived it all uh, I think that, uh, that uh, we, we were getting better all the time but. you have of course Aidan a record of never having lost in a county final I think at this stage that must be in your favour well uh, I mean whether it will be in your favour or not is another thing every final is a different game you know so I mean it is just on the day every player will have to play well if we want to win it you know it's going to be a hard tough game there's no doubt about it I think we'll certainly have a great game of hurling here today and uh, Valley Rovers have a very young team and a very nice hurling team and of course then again against that news don't have a nice balance I think a nice balance of youth and, and uh, Tim Crowley there and, and Teddy Kiley and Mike Crowley full back you know I think that we have a nice balance okay. all right Aidan Sean thank you very much and we'll talk again at half time well, as the crowds stream in here to the Charlie Hurley Park, some latecomers still arriving. The match timed a little bit early, of course, starting at quarter to three, or, well, maybe he's going to have a hard time getting started at that now, because the Valley Rovers team have just had their photographs taken, and both teams about to line up behind St. Joseph's Pipe Band, here today at the behest of the county board from Toker. And now the Noosestown players lining up behind the band but not in the right formation because they are posing for the photographers to have their pictures taken for the posterity. And of course, that will give us an opportunity to go through the various lineouts. And we'll start with Noosestown since they are in our view at this moment. And they have in goal Charlie Wilson. The full back line is Thomas Crowley, Mick Crowley, and Teddy Kelly. The half back line is Tom Collins, Pat Kennelly, and Crowhor O'Sullivan. Centre field for Nooses Down is Gerard Smith and Dennis Wilson. The half forward line is Tommy Crowley, Tim Buckley, and Ono Sullivan. And the full forward line is Michael O'Mahony, Tim Crowley, and Eugene Desmond. And as the St. Joseph's Toker by band lead off the parade, and marching nearest the camera and led by their captain Don Looney, we will go through the Valley Rovers team and they have in goal Michael O'Sullivan. The full back line is Pat O'Mahony, Don Looney and Noel Brady. The half back line is Aidan Crowley, Michael O'Connell and Fergus Tuig. Centre field for Valley Rovers today is TJ DC and Tony Lynch. Tony who is a newcomer to the Valley Rovers team this year having shone particularly well at the B competition gains his place on the Junior A because of the injury to Padraig O'Sullivan. 
Tony, who hasn't figured in the rise to stardom of the Valley Rovers team because he had a rather serious injury a number of years ago. However, he lines out today at centre field for Valley Rovers. The half forward line for Valley Rovers is Martin Cronin in the centre forward position, but originally picked at full forward is Brendan O'Sullivan, and on the left is Dennis Kiley. The full forward line is number 13, John Shields. And now the original centre forward, Chris O'Donovan, operates at full forward. And in the corner is John O'Donovan, and he'll be wearing number 17 this afternoon because of the injury situation in Valley Rovers. They did not finalise their team until just before the game. As I've said already, the Charlie Hurley Park here in Bandon, in magnificent condition, has a reputation for being maybe heavier than ordinary pitch, but all credit to the Bandon club because they have it absolutely in tip-top form for a match here on the 13th of November and we wonder will today be the unlucky 13 or lucky 13 for some. Newsestown of course have a proud record in county championship, a club formed only in 1958. They originally won the county junior football championship in 1966 when they became the first club from Carberry to do so. And in 1972, they then annexed the county junior title, their first time appearing in a county hurling final. Subsequently to that, they won the title again in 1981. And this year, they have come back from the intermediate ranks, having been narrowly beaten by Yall in the intermediate championship of last year by the narrowest of margins in actual fact. And of course, those of you who follow the games closely will be aware of the fact that Yall are this year the intermediate county champions. On the other hand, of course, the Valley Rovers story is one of extreme success, coupled with extreme disappointment in recent years. Having contested three county finals in 1985, they played in the 221 county finals, having been beaten narrowly by St. Finbars in the under-21 hurling, which, of course, that under-21 team forms the basis of today's junior hurling side. They, of course, appeared in the junior football final here just two years ago when they were agonizingly beaten by Kilmurray by a single kick as a one point and have an extremely low scoring game and maybe one of the reasons why they wouldn't be too happy to come to Bandon because it doesn't hold well particularly happy memories for Valley Rovers however they have put all that behind them and today they come here with a proud record having won the Southeast Championship in fine style, defeating Corsi Rovers in one of the best Southeast hurling finals played for long many a day, and beating Delaney Rovers and Ahabalag on the way to this final this afternoon. The huge crowd in here eagerly anticipating what we hope will be one of the best matches of the day. The roll of the drum and our on the vein. fans away to our left on the newly created natural grandstand if that's the correct way to put it but of course this is part of the new developments going on here at Bandon it provides a beautiful backdrop to this afternoon's game but of course back on the hurling field you will already see the lengthening shadows even though it is not yet three o'clock in the afternoon which of course indicates that it is indeed the middle of November your referee for this afternoon's game is Willie Horgan from the Brian Dillon's club he, Willie, of course, a much-experienced referee on the inter-county panel. 